day. Hi. What's up, Devin? Wait, you are Devin, right? I'm not just sitting with some random person. I don't know, I really should do that sometime. Yeah, that's me. It's been a really good day, actually. A good day? Well, how fortunate you are. I guess. Because I generally feel fortunate in life. Well, lucky you. I could kill for a good day. I'm sorry to hear that, dude. May I ask what was wrong with your day? Yeah, sure. First of all, my cat locked me out of my house this morning. Your cat? Yep. My cat. You heard me. I mean, that bastard knows how to work the locks. And then when I tried to climb in the window, I fell in his puke. Ugh. It's like he booby-trapped the whole damn house. <sighs> so, I mean, you can get me when I say I could kill for an okay day. Yeah, get it. That blows. <sighs> I'm sorry to hear that. But hey, maybe things will look up from now. I mean, we're here in this nice place. Got good music playing. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I'm sorry it took so long to get this date organized. I didn't even have to reply for a week. That's because I was on a retreat, you know? Eh, it's all right. I mean, if we're being honest, my sister set you up on this date with me. I mean, she's been talking to you this whole time. Uh, you know, she just didn't really want me to be lonely, you know, after she abandoned me for university. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's cool. I mean, she's looking out for you. That's neat. Cool. I was just afraid you might be weirded out by that. It's chill, man. Listen, it's good to have somebody looking after you to balance the shitty day you had. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. It's just been one nightmare after another. For real? Yeah. I mean, I've moved houses like four times in six months. The first place that I moved into was just crawling with bed bugs. And then the second place, it was flooding and cold all the time. And then the third place, I mean, don't get me started. Take a guess. I don't know, man. The landlord kept creeping on me. He even tried to ask me on a date. Ugh. Oh, you really don't have much luck. Listen, you gotta ask the universe. The universe can provide for you. Can the universe provide me with a stiff drink? Because I really need that right now. Right, I'm sorry. I'm a tea kind of a person myself. But we'll get you one. Any preference? Uh, something that's got a kick in it. Okay. There you go. See? Just gotta ask. And the universe provides. <laughs> That's genius. Can the universe provide me with a thousand bucks right now? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't quite work like that. <laughs> you funny. Well, and there I was about to universe everything that's gone wrong with my life. So, um, you must have some good stories aside all that bad luck. Yeah. No. Like a jailbird to your own negativity. I know what you need. Let me feed your mind with some positivity. So you see you have a cat. So you must love cats then, right? I actually really hate those buggers. But okay, hear me out. So there was this older lady who had a cat. And one night, it's the middle of the night, and she's sleeping. The cat started kneading her chest and meowing at her until she woke up like, meow, meow. And she wakes up, she sat up kind of confused, you know? Then she sees the cat going back and forth between the bed and the door relentlessly. I tell you, those little jerks, they keep you up at night. But hold on. So she gets up and figures out maybe the cat's hungry or thirsty. 
So as she walking towards the kitchen, she smells like something's burning. So she checks everywhere and everything seems fine. But then you see smoke coming in the front door. So she went to wake up the neighbors and call 911. Then they all got out safely to the streets. Her, the cat, the neighbors, and the little kids. Until the firefighters came to extinguish the fire. It turns out some faulty wire I made a spark in a neighbor's fridge. So, if the cat hadn't woken her up, who knows if they had made it, you know? How's that for a positive story? Does that make your heart a little lighter? Well, the one time out of a hundred that a cat wakes up its human for a valid reason, I'm not joining in the kumbaya. Sorry. Okay, what about this one? So there was this guy named Lulu. He had a dog, all right? The dog was named Kitty Cat. So what Kitty Cat did, went to visit that old lady, just to make sure everything was fine in the neighborhood. Now you're just making it up. I'm not making it up. Yes, you're making it up. No, Kitty Cat was a good dog. That was my cousin. Kitty Cat was a good... You're making my head hurt. Yeah, sure. Why? Definitely. When did you start playing the guitar again? Today. I haven't seen this little bad boy since Esther. Thanks. So, what did you want to talk to me about? I've been a jerk lately. I came in to apologize about how I've been reacting about this whole dating thing. It's fine. I mean, I actually think you're right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> You're right. I never thought I'd hear the day. I actually feel really bad for being, you know, wasting everybody's time. Like today, for instance. I went on a date with this person and I spent the whole time being really negative. He, on the other hand, was being really genuine and was trying to cheer me up. Yep. And I was this jerk who dug a hole so deep I couldn't even climb out to be nice to him. Yeah. I mean... I was miffed because of this whole, because I remember how bad this entire dating thing was. The game is challenging enough, and then, like, you better than anyone else remembers how frustrating it got. I wouldn't talk about anything else. Yeah, I know. I so, remember. I get a little bit touchy with this topic, and the game is hard, and adding someone who's in it, who's basically there just to make fun, but there are countless other people out there who are doing the exact same thing. So it is what it is. I just gotta let it go. Yeah. And I think I am ready to let go as well. I'm a bit over it. How come? Like I said, you know, I was really mean and negative to this guy and he just spent the whole time trying to cheer me up. Okay. How about this? Crazy idea. Maybe actually give these fake dates an, a real try. Like, actually go for it. I don't know. It's so forced, though. I mean, do people really go in these things for anything other than sex? Well, yeah. Well, especially you as a non-gay man. <laughs> what do you say like that? But that's a good idea. I mean, I could go as a gay man. You just said you were going to stop doing all these fake costumes. <laughs> I'm kidding. Clearly. Well, like, knowing you, like, I wouldn't imagine that you would not do it. I don't know. I have one more date left. Should I cancel? I don't know. Let me see. Give me the phone. Just cute. Not my type, but definitely yours. Do it. Don't cancel. And then maybe this time try not to be an upside down pinata. What does that mean? Like, okay, for instance, you have these negative personas. Or you like to push your fake dates a little too far. Maybe this time when you're planning your dates and your characters for yourself, you instead actually listen to the person you're with, and then you add a bit of humor and be funny 
and try and change the situation by being silly. You're pretty funny. Yeah, but isn't that what I do on a normal date? Yeah, but that's basically goals. It's be funny, add a little humor, and then you don't have to worry about trying anything else. I don't know, I get really nervous when I go on these dates as a regular person. Like, just try. Like, do it at first, do your fake character, and then as you get more comfortable in it, let it slide. Be natural and be open to it. Do what you did with that guy you were recently with. Daryl? Dan? Yeah, him. Do what you did with Dan. I didn't do anything with Dan. Well, based on the photo I saw from Max, maybe you should've. <laughs> anyway, I can only promise to try. Well, trying is better than nothing. And then maybe you'll be doing something. Try. Something. Okay.